So uh, hopefully that's the case. What I want to talk about are cannabinoids, endocannabinoids in particular, but cannabinoids in general, as really global homeostatic regulators, where their functions are not only things that are occurring within cells, but between cells, and then up onto our levels of consciousness, and how that impacts on society as a whole. So we see this tremendous uh, you know, global level of integrated regulation from cannabinoids. And really, it's all an expression of this underlying physics. I kind of like am an evangelical uh, person with respect to this physics because it's something that's not taught very much in the United States in particular, but it, it really just gives you a whole different perspective on everything. So I like to kind of spread that around and see how the cannabinoid system is really an embodiment of that and what kinds of things we might expect as a result of it being that kind of an embodiment. So really what I want to talk about is what is life and how the cannabinoid system plays into that and the perspective that I take is all based on this new physics known as far from equilibrium thermodynamics and how that accounts for really biology and everything else. So this work was all pioneered by Ilya Prigogine who got a Nobel Prize which just looks like an insignificant thing if you have a look at the man's CV. And I love this quote here because it just captures so much about everything. The more deeply we study the nature of time, the better we understand that duration means invention, creation of forms, continuous elaboration of the absolutely new. So what this is saying is that life and the creative qualities associated li with life are a natural extension of physics. So, fact. Large collections of molecules that are at or near equilibrium have fundamentally different properties from those that are far from equilibrium. It's like a discharged battery doesn't do anything and a charged battery can do all sorts of things. So that's kind of the analogy from a chemical point of view. So the molecules act creatively and cooperate. This is something totally bizarre from the old way of thinking and yet it's fundamental reality by the new one. So what are the consequences of that? Life must exist. It's a natural phenomenon. So when energy and mass flow, molecules self-organize and create flow-dependent structures, including prebiotic chemistry that led to life, families, communities, societies, economics, politics, and religion. So what I ultimately want to be talking about is how cannabinoids impact on, on especially politics and how that impacts on our society. Prigogine's work provides a new way of looking at the universe. Unlike Newtonian perspective, there is an arrow to time. The fractal-like reiteration of creative processes powers evolution. And the cannabinoids have such an incredible role in that because they do everything everywhere all the time. Emergent behavior is a fundamental characteristic of far from equilibrium systems. In other words, there's nonlinear change. And what that means is that outcomes of a particular event can't be linearly mapped back to where you started. Something new happens. In other words, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. The endocannabinoid system, therefore, because of its all-pervasive role, is a, is a prime and really unique example of, the, of all of this. So, you know, just in general, living systems are really all bioelectric. What we're looking at is the flow of electrons from where they don't want to be, our food, to where they want to be, CO2 and water. Fire extinguishers, the energy's gone. So a prime example of really far from equilibrium phenomena can be seen here in this little movie known as the belazov zabatinsky reaction. And what you're seeing here in a liquid, developing over time, emerging, is organization. In a liquid, of no, typically a liquid is just random molecules. How is it that molecules actually form organized structure? How do they form heterogeneity in a liquid? I mean, it goes totally counterintuitive to everything that we've been taught, but you're looking at it happen. You know, and statistically, this is so improbable. You're talking about 10 mLs of molecule, you know, of, of a liquid and molecules within that 10 mLs forming these organized patterns. Statistically, it's impossible. You know, you got 10 to the 20 molecules. This can't be happening. It can't happen. You just saw it happen. What you're looking at really is the flow of electrons from a specific chemical reaction along with a redox indicator, something that gives you a color as a function of whether it's reduced or oxidized, okay? So that's what's showing you this heterogeneity in what we would think of something that must be homogeneous. And this reaction, when it was first tried to be published in the 1950s, I forget whether it was Belazov or Zabotinsky, the editor said, no, we can't publish this because it goes against the second law of thermodynamics, therefore it can't be true. 
You know, you show them, but look, it's true. You know, it's like marijuana. Look, it's true, but some people can't adapt. And that's really what the basis of where I'm going with this talk is. So we have complexity generating, in fact, an arrow of time. We had prebiotic, pre, uh, prebiotic interactions forming these kinds of organized chemical structures where, where energy and mass flowed. That led to life. Life's essentially a phase change from that perspective. And ultimately, that develops to multicellularity, where you're having cells interacting, communicating, functioning together. And at every step of the way in this evolutionary process, the cannabinoid system took on a unique role in modulating things on up to the level of consciousness, where obviously it has a fundamental role. And, and in many cases, what it's doing is it's modulating free radical activity which I don't want to go into the whole of the details, but that's in a sense a sign of imbalance with your environment. What this far from equilibrium thermodynamics says is that we can take energy in from our environment, energy and organization, use it to power our organization, and it's a natural thing as long as we generate more waste. In other words, we can make ourselves smarter by making the universe stupider quicker. And free radicals play a 